My name is Marv Radio, and this is the FFS live stream. Tune in, share, subscribe now. Hello there. Welcome to another FFS live stream. I've already got the shaky head of the producer who does not like the way that I open this show occasionally. <laughs> but, you know, that's what we're looking for. Um, this is FFS live stream. We're a community spirit project. Uh, trying to bring together people from all across the industry that are working up here at the festival. Uh, one thing to address before we start uh, is uh, over the last couple of days we've, we've noticed that uh, there's been a sort of blue tinge uh, affecting some of our guests uh, because of some of the lighting inside the atrium. Uh, I just want to assure everybody that uh, people aren't like randomly blue. Uh, it's, just, it's just something that happens. It's the magic of Edinburgh. Um, do a quick bit of housekeeping blagging. Uh, if you want to get in touch with us to maybe come on the show, maybe come talk to us, uh, drop us an email, you can do so, uh, the details are on screen, you can drop us tweets as well, we love that, you can follow us on Facebook, uh, you can like, you could poke us if you wanted to, uh, <laughs> if that's still a thing. <laughs> um, we also have a GoFundMe page so that you can donate uh, to help us run this thing. And. We're also filming people's shows. Uh, we're subsidising a production company to film people's shows. If you want to do that, you can also get in touch with us at the same place. Now then, let us turn to our two guests today. We have David F. Grave. Hello. How are you doing? I like the way you put the emphasis on the last syllable there. F. F. Grave. Grave. Yeah, kind of showbiz. It's been pointed out that I do have a habit of uh, leaving a gap between the first name and surname. So oh, really? Like David <laughs> F. Grave, like I'm sort of stop, searching for it. Yeah, that's okay. It's fine. <laughs> no, I search for my own surname, really. How many Edinburghs have you done, sir? I've done six or seven, I think. Yeah, I'm one half of a double act, so I did the first three with him. Uh, it was still amicable, but he had kids. So, yeah, this is I've done three in a row now on my own. Put the kids in the show next time? Yeah, maybe. I suppose family. more for him. The I mean, good thing is his family's well, his wife's an actress as well. So there's sort of in theory they could um, you know, move up at some point. Although today's actually his first son's birthday. So oh. that's going to possibly write out Edinburgh forevermore. Well, maybe. Happy birthday. Yes. For that. Happy fifth birthday, Max. And we also have Sam Lutet. Hello now then, sir. You've been here several times with other people and you've probably seen this show more than anyone else I think <laughs> just you sat that? outside of the camera view um, you Stalker. are a PR assistant with Paul Sullivan PR yes I am Paul Sullivan PR and you also do comedy I do yes I've been known to but no show up here no show yet no um, everyone's been asking me are we going to come back next year for a show um, I'd really like to but I don't think I'll be able to get the money together because hmm. this is your first Edinburgh yes my first Edinburgh I've always wanted to come up here um, but never could until I got the opportunity to work up here. Um, How are you finding it? Do you know, I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, everyone said, oh, you're going to have a nightmare, or you're going to have like, really good times, and it's all going to crash. Um, but so far, I've just mostly had good times. Hmm. Excellent. Yeah. So the crash is due any Yeah, minute. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you do it, do it in the second <laughs> half, <laughs> uh, then that will make a great piece. We can, we can pull hmm. that out and use that as a proper thing. Um, so how have you found it so far? How have you found the city? I really like the city. Um, it's different to London. Um, I like that all the old stuff's kept in. There's not cranes of construction everywhere. Um, it's not all ridiculous high rises and skyscrapers. Um, and I like that you can walk everywhere because I don't drive. So oh, me neither. It's, well, yeah, yeah. So I like being able to walk places. It's often like people. That People who haven't been to Edinburgh or who don't come very often don't realise how compact it is, yeah. particularly the festival, which kind of, it does sort of all fit together. Yeah. Um, there are sort of key areas of the city where it's probably all within yeah, yeah. half a mile. It always seems like that. When you look on the sort of app to search, it's always about 0 0.3 miles away. Every venue seems to be. It's like how far you are from a rat or something. I don't know. Yes. How far you are from an Edinburgh venue. Or in London, it's, yeah, you're never more than six yards from a pret, I think, <laughs> yeah, is yes. the actual yeah, phrase. Yeah. Um, so just a little bit of pluggery, your show is uh, at the caves. It is. It's called David F. Grave, My Part and His Downfall. So basically I've decided the time has come to take some of the blame for the things that have happened in my life, really. Yeah. And uh, I, I sort of bid it as uh, the 1991 Warner Wagtails Holiday Camp Talent Show winner, 
one third of best band in Hertfordshire and uh, Hertfordshire Theatre School's most promising student 2002 pinpoints the moment it went wrong. Basically. Right. So yeah. These are pretty impressive credentials. Do you think? And that's I from some. We've had we've had 2003's International Man of Leather on the show. <laughs> was, uh, it, was that David Dickinson or something? <laughs> <laughs> he's, made, he's made of leather. Yeah. I believe. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. True. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I started big with a talent show when I was about 10. Isle of Wight uh, doing magic. Won, won a holiday to Walton on the Nays, which is particularly impressive. Beautiful place. To get into the final, but didn't go any further. Sank without a trace, basically. What can you do? Well, magic. Well, then, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, are you still are you still dabbling with the magic? Not well, maybe a little bit. You know, I, there was that weird thing. I was I really wanted to be a magician when I started. Uh, I was a huge fan of Paul Daniels, um, and I guess as I got a little bit older, you realised there was something kind of uncool about it, or so it was seen. Whereas mm. I think things have sort of come back round again. And I was lucky enough because I run a comedy club. We booked Paul Daniels, and he did one of his last gigs for us. Uh, and I mean, it was just incredible for one. But I got he did a trick just for me, which was just you know the childhood me would never have dreamt that would happen. So that was a very cool. You told me thing. about this comedy club. Yes. Which is your toy box. You're just inviting. People it is that basically you, like that. Really honestly, like. it honestly is. It's like who would the kid inside really want to see? Which is why we had like John Thompson, we had uh, Roy Bremner, um, but all yeah people that we really really, really love basically, and we're sort of lucky that we've got to the point that it's grown, because it's just out of London, that you can pull those sort of people in and pull a crowd. So yeah, it's absolutely, it's not about the money in any way, shape or no. form, it's just about the just chance about to spend time. It's all about me. Yeah. Yeah, I, private dances, I book acts, in, entertain me. <laughs> any old song will do. Exactly, yeah, and I do wear the wig. Which, you know that song was written by Mark Knopfler? I didn't know that. No. That's a fact for you. Which song? Private Dancer. The Tina Turner track, oh, Mark Knopfler. Mark Knopfler yeah. The original lyrics presumably was, I'm your Mark Knopfler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Knopfler for I'm Knopfler money. for money. Knopfler for money. Yeah. Which is a sexual practice, I believe. He does a lot less knuffling these days. He though, does. I he used to wear a sweat band, didn't he? Was it him? Oh, no. Was that Mark Knopfler who yeah. wore the sweat band? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be honest, I don't know who Mark Knopfler is. Oh. He's the front man of, um, no, I've forgotten. Guy Straight. Guy Straight. Yeah. Or I always assume he's American, but he's not. They're from like Newcastle or something. They I are from Newcastle, yeah. yeah. I think Whitley Bay. Oh, is it really? I think yeah. so. Are they renowned for sweaty foreheads? Or? I, think I think they've got a song about Whitley Bay. Oh, okay. I don't know how sweaty their foreheads can be. It's not that no. warm up there, surely. Yeah, this is true, yeah, yeah. We just play a lot of tennis, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Him and McEnroe. So have you found some nice spots to, to kind of hang out so far? Yeah, I really like the meadows. Um, because it seems like there's, there's stuff going on there, but it's different from all the craziness that's going on around the, mm. the mall concrete areas. Yeah. Have you been down the mile? Have you uh, experienced that? I have not fully down the mile. I haven't done the whole mile, um, but it's mad. Um, it's yeah, really busy. Um, and I haven't fully been across it. There's a lot of street performers and I think certainly the last couple of years a lot more uh, like my uh, like human statue mm. type things um, yeah, yeah. of varying levels of success <laughs> I think. Uh, I think some some of them are like official and really impressive, yeah. and then some of them have just got a mask on, and I, I'm pretty sure they've just like taken up a pitch there. <laughs> they've caught that disease in the film Awakenings. Have you ever seen that? The Robert De Niro film, Rob De Niro and um, Robin Williams, where he catches a disease where he basically freezes into a statue. They may be suffering from that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I like to bring things down. <laughs> I, was so. I was yeah. just gonna, I was going to do a Spider-Man bit. But, oh, okay, uh, yeah, true. Ooh, That's true. <laughs> I just. There was someone dressed as Spider-Man the other day. Could have been the real Spider-Man. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. This is true. You never know, would you? Presumably, if I'd have put like 50p in his in his cup, then yeah. then he might have web slung his way all over the place. <laughs> Although, as you say, not a lot of high rise around here. So no, exactly. Yeah. Tricky place for Spider-Man, I imagine. Yeah, true. It's probably Especially during festival season. Yeah. Um, so you've been to several fringes. Do you think it's changed over the years? Do you, have you found I don't know if it's changed, or maybe my attitude to it has changed. You know, I think it's a bit of both, really. Um, I think people are a little bit more mindful now about how hard it can be and how, you know, how challenging it is for a performer. Um, but again, as I say, I don't know if that's also part of my own sort of journey, to use that horrible word. Because mm. when, I, when I first came here ten years ago with my, with my double act, you know, even though everyone said to you what it's going to be like, you sort of go, oh, no, it'd be fine for me, or, well, you know, we'll, we'll hit the ground one running, it'd be amazing. And then it was, it was debt straight away. It was um, challenging reviews that were really hard to deal with. You know, the audiences seemed to be liked it, liking it, but the reviewers not. And it, yeah, it was, I, yeah, very dispiriting. Um, I mean, great, I mean, sort of retrospectively, you look back and go, oh, it's great for a month to do something that you love and to do your own show. But yeah, it made me, <laughs> hate a lot about myself maybe and, and me as a performer whereas now I try and sort of embrace some of that and understand some of that and even use it in, a, in the show 
Reviews so, are a hot, a hot button topic. Certainly yeah, this yeah, year yeah. I've seen a lot of people. I mean, I think every, every year. But, yeah, but. and I, I just I know people are more open to say now that you know of of all the shows that are reviewed, sometimes you're being reviewed by people who aren't familiar with comedy. Particularly, it could be students for other things, so they just sort of call in. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's very hard because we're all searching our name. You try not to, but you're yeah. gonna you know you're gonna find it. And it's that thing where it becomes the sort of legacy of your run. And often it's in no way reflective of how you felt or what the show was, or how people mm. enjoyed it. But it, you know, it just sits there and it gathers. I don't know more, more people see it, and it just, you know, they can, these things can define what you think about yourself. Absolutely. You know? And particularly yeah. when you get to the point where you do a show and there's something in a review that's negative, and you get to the next day and you go, "I'm doing that bit now," you know. Um, so yeah, it is hard. It's we've, very hard. We've been quite lucky with reviews this year, um, but it did remind me the other day to look up. I remember a very, very bad review from last year. Right, okay. We a show, and we got a one-star review that was yeah. really, the opening line was something like, there is nothing redeeming in this show. <laughs> um, Great, yeah, And yeah. I was saying the other day, we actually had somebody, there was another reviewer in the same day who gave it five stars and loved it. Oh, there you it. go, that absolutely um, illustrates it, doesn't it? But I did look it back up mm. yesterday, mm. and it just, it's still, yeah, it's still it does. Yeah, it's yeah. still like, oh, this is actually as, as bad as I remember it. Maybe I yeah. was blowing it out of, yeah, yeah. no, it is, it's pretty bad. <laughs> But you just, you, you remain raw, and I think we're, we're all sensitive. And, mm. and, you know, there's that thing where you assume maybe sometimes what people think about you, but you don't hear it when it's written there. Even if they don't truly believe it, because they're just trying to fill a page, it's very specific. And I think particularly, like you say, it's what, that thing that you just said. Sometimes I remember a particular review saying, the reason for David's blandness is this. And you're like, ah. so it's a fact then. It's a cast iron That's fact. A I had a know. completely different idea of my blandness. Yeah, yeah. Now you, oh, now, oh, okay, that as well. Oh, good, I'll have that in. Yeah, so, I, yeah, it is very hard. And, but then at the same time, I also read somebody say something about the only one who really truly reads the reviews are you. Um, yeah. You know, and just let the show do the thing, I suppose. But it is hard. Sam, as a PR, yes. are you helping to diffuse any, any bombs of that nature? Yeah, so um, we we'll Without work mentioning work. any specific no, names? Bear in mind that Paul Sullivan is my PR as well, so these yes. are, you're, you're yeah. dowsing my fires. Well, <laughs> let me tread carefully. Is he, is he terrible? Is he <laughs> terrible? Very bland, okay. very bland. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll look at reviews and we'll um, let them know. Some, some of them don't want to know. Um, some of them are quite happy to know. Um, so we try and um, you know, do it based on their wishes. Um, and do you end up kind of having to console act and...? Not really, usually... Um, You're working with quite experienced people, yeah, I guess. And yeah, I'm, I'm very lucky to have worked with some really great people. Um, and then me as well. And yeah. David, yeah, yeah. David comes it's good to sometimes. Have Full yeah, spread. exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but no, a lot, a lot of the people, they've, yeah, like you said, they've been here before, they know the score, um, so... Sometimes um, they get a, a review that would, looks good, but they don't think it's good. Mm. Um, it can look brilliant and they think it's rubbish, or yeah. you know, vice versa. The odd four. Four reads like a five, yeah. or, or like yeah. a two. <laughs> uh, or just, I just did not like that one particular quote. Mm. But yeah. the great ones are like the two-star reviews that have one pull quote where you can go, I am going to use that. Yes. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably not the star rating. I think those are my favourite to read. But don't you think people have got more wise to that now? Because sometimes I look at it and I go, this is, an, this is a genius negative review because I can't find a way around any of this. All the words, even independently of themselves, are negative. You know, it's quite, it's quite a talent. My favourite piece of PR from the last few years is the, the Tom Hardy craze film, uh, yeah. Legend, where they, oh, had, yes. they had a poster and it was just, it was a blanket of stars. Yes. And in the middle, between the two Tom Hardy pictures, of him as diff both the craze, there's you can just see two stars and it says the Guardian, <laughs> uh, and it was a yeah. two-star review that they managed to immaculately hide Genius. in this wall of stars that made it look like you just assumed well yeah. no one would put it there if it was actually two stars there must yeah, be exactly. other stars hidden behind that nope two-star review <laughs> Genius. brilliant piece yeah, yeah. of work, um, and I suppose it's incumbent on on all acts here to to use those find those opportunities to use. You know, the positive stuff and absolutely yeah. swallow up and crush all of the negatives. Yeah, I, I'm, I was, it's what occurs to me the other day. It's like a very posh form of Twitter trolling, the internet, uh, and the, the, uh, the end of fringe, because it is. All of a sudden, the bullies all come out, but we're sort of actively seeking it, you know. And everyone, I think the difference with now with the internet and everything, everyone has a sort of level footing. Mm. So it's very hard to separate things. You know what I mean? It used to be the case if you're in the Guardian, you're in the Scotsman, you're physically in the paper, that was the thing to lord. But now it's 
I think as a performer, you look at it and you can believe a lot in the things you read just because maybe the website looks nice. Do you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. someone with a website. And I think as performers, it's like you get five stars from the stage mm. and then you get a one star from like some young blog that only has yeah, about yeah. three followers and you're like, damn, that exactly, yeah. they just cancel each other out. Yeah, yeah. You know, who's right? Yeah. Um, we're going to cut across to a mystery package now Ooh, uh, that's sexy. coming to you from the future because we're about to go out and record it. Uh, so who knows what it might be? Check it out. <laughs> uh, I'm joined by Marv Radio. How are you going? Ah, I'm good. Good. You've been up here a week? Yeah, I got up here on Friday the 3rd. So it's yeah, 10 days, nine days. Who counts? I don't count. Numbers aren't important to me. Enjoying the weather? Yeah, I was, and I also think the, the rain is cool. I mean, it does what it does. It washes away a lot, and um, it's like, not, not so good for audience In members, London, but... two months I've spent moaning that, you know, when will it rain, why is it so hot? You know, this is your come fault, up here, then. it's nice and cool, and rain, and it took me about five minutes before I'm like, oh, rain, man, nah. I mean, that's, that's the Londoner mentality, or Brit mentality. So what are you doing up here? Is this, is this your first visit to the Fringe? Well, this is my third visit to the Fringe, my first time going it alone, so okay. to speak, into the unknown, hashtag. Hashtag. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm doing my own show in a meditation class every morning and without a team, which is baptism of fire. You are a one-man band. I am a one-man band, literally. Almost, yeah, because yeah, you, you do a beatboxing show. Yeah, I do beatboxing, spoken word, loop station, rapping. Um, yeah, just storytelling, really. Storytelling yeah. in a different way. I mean, this is something that's like not been, it's almost like beat poetry, like yeah. you know, the kind of 50s beat poetry scene. Yeah, something like that. And there's some prose in it as well, you know, just um, telling my story, because I've had a, quite an interesting ride to get here, and it doesn't seem to be getting boring anytime soon. So just talking about the things I've been through from adolescence, or even from the womb, strange things that have occurred in my life to now to music to going to the Amazon rainforest to coming back and learning the healing power of voice and music and stuff like that yeah yeah because we've got you on because you're just a very interesting person I think I've been watching you. some of your vlogs and but there's a lovely positivity about it and yeah like you're just enjoying yourself yeah I am I, am. I, um, I, can, I kind of have had a few experiences that uh, for legal reasons I won't mention deeply that um, have made me realize how how much of a cosmic joke we're in and how much this is a beautiful show that we're in. Like we're into theatre, we're into show and things like that. This, this is what life is. It's um, kind of something that we created to entertain ourselves because um, it's boring otherwise. So all the things that happen and all the things that come, whether they're good, bad or ugly, I mean, I, I try to live in non-duality. So they're all just things that are coming up for a reason and they all have their purpose and meaning. So. Because we, we talk a lot on this show about like the pressures of the fringe and like the bubble and how difficult it is, but it's loads of fun, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like there is just so many like-minded people here just like making their art and getting yeah. on with it. No, it's a beautiful place to be, and um, I think it's a metaphor for life, really. Like if you if you focus on what's going wrong and keep speaking about that, then you're inviting more of it in, um, which is kind of what I do, to be honest. But in another way. But if you if you notice. The energy you bring to it is the energy you get back. And I've had loads of warmth, loads of openness, lots of people who have um, attended a show or a meditation, had really beautiful experiences, said how heartwarming it's been. And really, I think it is what you make of it. If you want to be snowed under and if you're coming here with some ambitions of, I need this to happen, this specific thing needs to happen. If it doesn't happen, my life is... You're just going to be stressed. And I'm, I'm here to test myself and see what I can achieve by myself. And... Um, yeah, I'm pretty proud. I'm so still going. As well as your show, you're doing meditation classes? Yeah. Classes, Sessions? Yeah. Sessions. So it's, it's kind of um, teaching a few different techniques, um, doing a bit of visualization, and teaching people the sounds to, that they can use to sort of align their energy centers and emotions. And I'm really having some beautiful experiences. You know, um, one time just one person showed up, but she was able to emotionally unblock and she's in a show here and she you know tears were coming out of her eyes and then afterwards she was so happy and overjoyed that she'd come and everybody who's come to the meditation has really appreciated it and glad that it's happening um, most people that I've had is five in, in in the workshop which is is cool I can have up to 20 but it's um it's also a nice place for people to meet other people who are on that journey of being becoming aware and becoming conscious 
And you're doing this at the Natural Food Cafe? Yeah, that's right. 11.55 every day apart from Mondays, because who wants to work on a Monday if you've got the chance? <laughs> you said speaking on a Monday. I mean, this isn't work, is it? It's, nah. it's just a friendly chat with a, with a new friend. You've, uh, you've just had a meeting here yeah. in Fringe Central. Yeah. Tell us about that. Well, um, I came to um, a workshop which was getting the right people to attend your show. And as part of that, they mentioned that they do um, one-to-one sessions where you can come through and focus and ask a few questions. And, and they're really kind, because even though I'm not in the actual fringe, uh, I haven't signed up as a fringe participant, budgetary reasons, mm-hmm. <laughs> it, it costs a fair bit to be part of it, but they're still open to, to give advice to people. The only thing that they wouldn't give me is direct contact details, because legally that's yeah. only for the participants who signed up. That's what you're paying your yeah. registration fee for. for exactly. That. But they'll give me the names and then I can do the research and contact them on Twitter, find their info at addresses and things like that. So, There, yeah. there is a lot of that open to people. I've seen, uh, I think Amy Taylor, who we had on the show the other day, uh, is the theatre editor at The Skinny. Mm. Uh, she was doing a lot of tweeting about people getting in touch with her direct and just saying mm. that her contact details are out there. Like, you know, if anybody wants to get in touch with them, then it just takes a Google search and, you know, mm. as long as you know who you're looking for, you can find these things out for yourself and mm. kind of work your own way through it. Yeah. But it's great that the Fringe are, are giving you that help as well. 100%, yeah. I mean, um, I think when you're doing everything by yourself, um, it's easy to do just enough of everything and not, you know, for example, getting here was the main part and then I had accommodation issues. I was scammed by somebody who yeah. was going specifically through the Edinburgh Fringe before his forum performance forum, forum and looking for people who were looking for accommodation yeah. and then saying oh here's this room and taking payments and then disappearing off Facebook yeah unfortunately that's that. happened the last couple of years I think yeah. it's, I don't know what you can do to protect more against that whether there's something that the fringe society could do or I maybe... think it should be a pin post at the time when people are looking for accommodation do not pay Anything. anybody up front yeah. and if somebody contacts you saying they've got a room because um, there's three or four people on that on that on that thread on that forum that are saying, yeah, this has happened to me too. Same, yeah. same person. So, you know, you come to Edinburgh and you find that ten people think that they've booked the same room, and it's a B and B, and there is no room. And yet, and the actual address without a door number takes you to a B and B. So it's like, here, arrive here and then spend more money. Um, I've been fortunate enough to uh, stay with someone that I was up here with I was last, say, you've, last you've, year. You've managed to get yourself sorted out. Yeah, yeah. I mean. You know, you, you don't make a phrase like turn bullshit into fertilizer without actually doing it. And that is the catchphrase. Yeah, it's, it's catching. And I'm a, a client of mine that I do, I do sound therapy and sound healing, things like that as well, um, as well as informal counseling. I'm not trained, but I, I have learned through various experiences. And a friend of mine who's been going through some tough stuff, she's like, every time that I'm going through tough stuff, that phrase is now getting caught in my head. And I'm like, okay, what can I do? So it's not just a, a meaningless, um, few words or a hashtag it's something that when people think about it it's like yeah you think about the process of farming and you need you literally do need bullshit to grow food yeah and it's it's kind of how you look at it you get it on your fingers and go oh it smells but then you put your food in it and it grows really well so um, I personally my personal take on life is that it is as well as this beautiful theater piece it's a training ground and with that training ground, you're not necessarily going to see the results of the work that you're doing yeah. instantly or you know, get, get financial rewards or anything like that. It's actually your growth. And my, my personal mission is to be able to withstand any pressure and to be in any situation and make the best out of it and doing all right at it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. It certainly looks that way, yeah. yeah. It's t- taking negatives and turning them into positives. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, if anybody out there needs a friendly face to go up to and say hello to, I think you'd probably be my first pick. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm very easy to find online. Um, you can find me on all social medias if you just search Marv Radio. And also... We'll, uh, can... we'll put your details on the screen so that people can... Uh... It might touch. be there now, it might not, but it <laughs> might be right here and it might not. Who knows? Editor's <laughs> choice. Um, but yeah. What's, what's your hope for this fringe? What's your expectation? What do you hope to get out of it? Um, I've already achieved what I came here to do, which was to come here with an unfinished show and feel comfortable with improv and storytelling and tell my story. That part is there. Um, I've had one sort of really amazing guy who's reviewing and taking photos of the show, but not very well known. So I'd like to get a couple of reviewers in. Um, be in a position where, from my press pack, from my theatre pack, contacting other theatres and doing my show, um, I can basically have some sort of 
Do you find that hard because it's not a traditional like theatre show? Do you find that yeah. there's more openness at the fringe for that than there is maybe elsewhere? Yeah, I mean... Um, you're based in London, right? Yeah, so I'm based in London. I've worked through a place called Stretton Space, which is a really great community fundraise. Um, they, they did a crowdfunded theatre. Um, and I did, like, a 30-minute preview version of the show there, and it was received really well. But I've all, I always find getting in contact with critics and getting them to come to a show difficult because, again, doing everything by oneself, yeah. you're dealing with what you view to be most important first, which can mean that the six week lead up time that most people want to be able to come to something is a bit of a myth for, for me. It's like, okay, it's two weeks to the show or it's a week to the show or it could be a few days and finally I've got my head out of all of the work that it requires to make something happen. Because I think a lot of people, especially theatre goers who are not theatre makers, they don't see the amount of work that's involved around the show. They see, oh, they're performing on stage, great. Um, anyone who's a producer or a professional a theatre professional will know how much goes into it and then imagine doing that by yourself. Mm. It's um, the never ending story to Are quote you making the film friends title. up here? Are you, yeah. are you asking around finding people? Yeah, um, I I'm now doing more socialising because it's been something where my head has been go to the show, try yeah. to get people in. Um, a few of my friends from London just arrived today, really good friends that I've shared some experiences with that have come to my elevator um, I usually do like a four hour thing where people meditate and then they get a sound bath where I use my voice and other tools to take all the pressure off and allow them to actively dream. Um, and when I say actively dream, to be awake, but to work through their problems in a safe environment. I've only got an hour here, but we still get a lot done. And um, these two friends, spoken word artists, they're here and it's, it's excited to meet them, but also meeting you. So everyone I meet, I consider a friend and say, look, here's, here's my contact details. You know, if you, if you want to hang out, hang out. If you want to come to the meditation, come to the meditation. If you want to come to the show, come to the show. But the most important thing is that there's so many people here from so many walks of life that even I got here and I was like, okay, there's not many people of color or, or there's not many people from my background or there's not many people from the hip hop scene. And slowly then they just start arriving. It's like, oh, right. <laughs> Maybe it was me, like, thinking I'm um, different. And, like, actually, it's just everything is here and you just have to put the energy out and it comes back. And nice. there's, there's things Fringe are doing, amazing things, like artists of colour meetups. And I think that, that really, you know, I'm not, I am someone who doesn't really see in racial terms, just historic terms and just present terms of how people are treated due to race, but I see everyone as my brother and sister. Um, but seeing people that look like you who are doing the same thing as you, it does... It does bring a warmness into the heart, a warmth into the heart to say, we're in this together and it's not against anything, but we're supporting each other. Um, which is, it's a really powerful thing. So yeah, there's, there's people like you here, there's people not like you here, and they're very approachable. You can just go up and speak to someone and look in, I'm, I'm, I'm about to start playing the game today of spot the color of the past yeah. and um, who you might be and how we can speak. So yeah. um, I saw some orange passes. You some, need to find those orange. Blue, those some blues, orange yeah, 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 orange ones, press, blue ones, um, <laughs> arts industry, they may have a venue, they may have something to, so yeah, having a little chat. And, Just anybody. And the best thing about what I do is I can go up and go, hi, do you have a minute? Cool. <laughs> From that moment, you're either invested or you're not. And most people are like, what is this guy? So, um, yeah, use your skills to your advantage. If you're, if you're a magician, be like, have you got a minute? Do a trick. Oh, I thought you were going to do one there. Um, here's how you turn bullshit into fertilizer. No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, life is magic, right? We're, we're like walking, breathing bags of blood and pus and oxygen. And somehow we manage to convey meaning everywhere we go, so that's magical it's enough. It's going to be the title of my show next year, just one big bag of pus. Bag of pus! <laughs> it's been great to meet you, man. Lovely to meet you too. Thanks going on. Yeah, great. Very Nothing sad. at all, so no rib and custard, no Henry's cat. You no, know, you know what you're how, researching. How, how disgusting you young are you? I'm 21 years old. That's disgraceful. Yeah. Absolutely well, what disgraceful. What year were you born? What does that mean? 96. That's, oh, yeah. when football came home. Yeah. <laughs> interesting fact, I played the baby in train tomorrow. Really? Wait a minute. Hello. Is this true? No, this, this was, oh, this was yeah, a joke. Oh, we go. This was a joke. Hello, welcome back to FFS Livestream. Uh, some good banter going on here. We were exactly. absolutely sold Excellent. and almost, almost uh, believed that yeah. completely. Uh, I was I'm still sold. believing I was it, to be honest, yeah. Um, you've just enjoyed a mystery package, uh, which will be delivered. Um, 
I will apologise again, uh, because of the darkness of the room today, the lighting has gone up a bit, so we're even more blue than normal. Uh, although my eyes are more bloodshot than normal as well, so maybe it will balance out in the edit. I don't, I don't know. Probably not. Getting the shaky head. Um, guys, what a great banter we had. Oh, huh? some excellent banter. That was solid. Yeah. Yeah. I liked what you said earlier. That, 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 that thing, thing about yeah, the stuff, yeah, yeah. it was amazing. It was. Very witty. We really should have got that on camera. I know. Uh, yeah. It's a shame. Oh, well. Never mind. Um, so does the festival get easier, do you think? Uh, do you know, in a weird way, I think it sort of does. In, and that's what I was saying before about your approach to it. I think if your approach to it changes and you can be a bit, take more care of yourself. Like, for example, I meditate every day. Right. And I found that really, really does help with things. Because however stressed or anxious you might feel or negative, it sort of resets you just a little bit. Do you think we're more open to this now? I mean, I think, yeah, I, I hope think so. for a long time, People would have laughed at. I know. People and saying, even oh, saying it or, is a bit like you we've know. We've had people on that have said they're doing yoga and mm. you know going to the gym and all of yeah. those things. I think when I first started coming to Edinburgh, I think you'd be drummed out of the yeah, Canadian yeah. society for. But what, why for do sort of things for bad for you to make you feel better, and why would it be bad to do things that are good for you? It just is yeah. just ridiculous, really. Is it because we're all getting older? I well, think that's possibly some. Most of yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. Most of us are getting older. Some are just perpetually. Well, I am Peter getting Hennings. older at the same rate. I, everyone ages <laughs> sure? at the same time. Well, I mean, yeah. I've seen you spray with water like the Mary Rose just to sustain you. Yeah. I know you do. Just that. Peter panning your way through yeah. life. Yeah. You know, I'm only going to be young for a little while. <laughs> So how do you cut? You meditate? Yeah, every day, um, and I try and get enough sleep, and I try and be, treat it more like when I'm at home. So it's okay right. to not go out after a show. It's okay to watch The Simpsons or whatever you normally do to sort of chill out. That is good because you have quite an early show. Yes, that helps definitely. So, I think, and also because it, basically I get up at my breakfast to the show. There's no time for the negative chatter to get in really. I know having done you know eight o'clock or sort of ten o'clock or even midnight, you've got all day to sort of cycle in and out of I want to do this, I don't want to do this, it's terrible, it's good, it's all that yeah. stuff, you know. So I thought I did one show late night and right. I don't think I could do that again. No no was it was it the only one you were doing as well or yes. That fast yeah well, one time in my double act we brought our comedy club up so literally the first time we were doing anything was one in the morning and that's right. just horrendous. Because yeah. your whole day is building to that point. Then you want to stay up, you stay up till six or seven and then it goes on and you feel terrible you know? yeah i was just a bag of nerves the whole time really? yeah just oh, yeah wait, waiting the whole day waking yeah. up in the morning going oh, it's geez, horrible it's, isn't it? when's 10 40 oh yeah, it's still yeah. another 12 13 hours away yeah. but that's like the actor's nightmare isn't it really because you, that's what your day is like really when you're when you're waiting for a show and sometimes i find I'm, I'm spending so much energy like almost like i'm about to go on and do it for the whole day yeah. and you have to find that's where the meditation is useful it sort of resets you you step away from it a bit you don't I, have that next I think the other difficult thing about the late night shows is that you feel like you need to be using your day productively. So it's like, yeah, well, yeah. that'll be good because I can go out and fly out. And, yes. and it just becomes a whole day yeah. of work. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, yeah. And then, the bit, and then you yeah. go to work. Yeah, exactly. Um, Definitely. So 12 o'clock is nice, nice slot? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, there's pluses and there's minuses. It's great for the sort of mindset thing. It's a bit tougher for audiences, I think. And also sometimes even audiences that are there haven't really woken up their mind for comedy yet, you know. Right. Although at the same time, I think the people who are there, they are there because they want to be there. I found that more so this time, actually, more than ever. And even if it's a small audience, like, one of the best ones I had was four people this time, but they were just so on board all the way through, you know. Yeah. Um, and also I think it's like the psychology of comedy. Sometimes, sometimes a small audience feels like a small audience. Sometimes they don't. I've had like yesterday, in fact, it was probably the busiest one I had, um, and they felt like they were a small audience. You could just tell. They came into the room and went, oh, this is a big room. Whereas yeah. the four, they were perfectly content with being there and they enjoyed it. So it's I, such th a I think I've seen, I've seen that happen in yeah. the very self-same room that oh, you're, you're performing right. in, yeah, where yeah. you have a crowd of like, 30 and think this is going to be great yeah. and then 20 seconds in you go this isn't That's this it. isn't going to happen absolutely yeah, and yeah. I've got to do this for another 50 there was one I did where there were clearly like tourists and my comedy is quite uh, reference driven so like you know and I said something like uh, one of them was something like have you heard of Wilkinson no and you go okay have you heard of Marks and Spencer no and you're like okay I'm not sure this show is going to work and you have to find a moment where you go do I address this do I say do you want to stay and watch this should we end where were because, these tourists from, Mars? Uh, I, don't, I think they were only like America they're, they're or, or, or... Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it, was just, but it literally got to the point where I was like, well, look, genuinely, do you want me to carry on? Should we stop? I went, oh, yeah, maybe we'll stop. I'll buy you a drink. And then I went out, they're gone. So it's like, but yeah, it's, like, it's, yeah it's, it's so different. You, know, you can have a tiny audience. Some of the best, <laughs> best, in inverted comma, reviews that I ever had with the double act were to the smallest audiences because they just, you're forced into it. You know, you have a conversation rather than detaching. I think. 
Yeah, I think the size of audience is never, never as important as the no. as the welcome to it. We, we had a bit of a nervous moment yesterday morning because we had nobody booked in for our show yesterday. Oh, really? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I checked maybe at midday, and it was. I think we got a couple, so it's yeah. like, oh, well, at least we've got someone. Yeah, yeah. And then we ended up with twenty five. I don't know where right. they came from. Yeah, maybe. yeah. It's so bizarre, isn't it? But it's, it's worse when you have none at all. So at least if you know you're going to be doing a show. It's hard when you set up and do everything and you go, well, it could happen. I'd have to put all my energy into this next hour or I'm just going to pack down and go, you know. It's, yeah, but like, same for me, actually. Yesterday was with this busy, busy one, there were two people booked and again, about 25 people, 30 people appeared out of nowhere. So, cool. I mean, I bring that up just because hopefully there are people watching who are having the same problem thinking there's going to be no one and you know, yeah, yeah, it yeah. turns out all right. Absolutely, it's going to be all yeah, right. yeah. It's never as bad as you think it's going to be really truly, is it? No. Uh, you know, until tomorrow. Sam, how are you coping with, with the fringe? You, uh, you're young enough to be burning the candle at all ends. Well, <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've been getting early nights and sleeping properly, which is weird because I don't do that at home. <laughs> I, I seem to be a lot healthier here. Um, I'm just getting over the cold. Which is stuck around. Yeah, sorry, I should yeah. have said that at the start. <laughs> that's, the, that's the blue tinge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the curse of the blue tinge. Um, but no, I'm, I'm feeling groovy. Yeah. Yeah. And you're eating properly and. I'm trying to. I don't want to mother you or anything, but. No, it's, um, <laughs> you, you drink enough water, you're staying hydrated. Drinking loads of water. Um, yeah, eating. Um, we're lucky enough that, um, yeah, we get, we get food paid for and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm eating as much as I can. And how, uh, not to put Paul Sullivan PR on trial here, but uh, you've been treated well. Are you really well? Far there's too a nice, well. a nice support <laughs> network. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I, I, uh, I need constant reassurance, um, which I've been given, which is lovely. Um, also, what um, for Kim Morgan PR as well, um, who's uh, just leaving today actually, really sadly, um, but she's absolutely wonderful. Um, and so we, we live with them too. Um, and it's, it's, it's really nice having both of them there. And you know, obviously they know what they're doing. I don't, um, but they're, they're really good at sort of um, calming me down if I'm, if I'm freaking out a little bit. So you're learning a lot? Yes, Is it oh yeah. A crash course? Yeah, very much so. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity because it means I get to meet fabulous comedians. Um, and and, and me David there is the control, I'm the control. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, all sorts of people. Um, I get to see a load of shows that I wouldn't get to see. Um, and yeah, to be able to see the fringe a little bit from behind the curtain, um, which is, you know, which would be cool with, you know, whoever you are, even if you weren't looking to, to get into this, this horrible world. Um, but uh, yes. When it comes to your comedy, are you looking at this thinking, yeah, I fancy this? Well, when I got here, I was thinking, how the hell do people go on stage and do an hour show every single night, right. then having, after having to do their PR, that seems a lot easier. <laughs> um, yeah, um, I've, I, I just was thinking about the show I'd like to do, and I wrote one joke, it was a one-liner, and then I googled it and I found out that Stephen Wright wrote it yeah. <laughs> about two years before I was born. Yeah. Um, is, so it the, still, is, it, is it the dictionary one? No, it's um, I'd kill for a Nobel Peace Prize, right? Mm. Which I thought was brilliant, and I thought, yeah. why has no one done that? And, and then you always invariably <laughs> find yeah. Twitter's awful for that. I've, yeah. I have got into the habit of before I make a joke on Twitter, I'm like, that's brilliant. Someone's yeah. probably done that. Yeah. You look for it, and yeah, like a million people have. Yeah. So, yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing new anymore. No, exactly. It's good that you're being looked after. So I bring that up because I think we're. We're definitely trying to get an idea of like across the industry, not just performers, but you know that everybody needs that support. Yeah, it's good. I feel like I should give you a copy of today's paper, and I am being treated well. Yeah, um, <laughs> but it's like that with the, the staff, the tech staff. You know, and there's plenty of horror stories of people not being paid properly doing that, or yeah. being treated very badly. And, and flyers is yeah, also absolutely yeah, and very it, big. And it's just what I don't really understand that. I think we should all be helping each other out, really. Um, I mean, that's always for me. Like I always have gone with technicians and paid them myself because in a way I'd, I'd much sooner pay them and have them have the money yeah. than pay through a venue and have them only get a small percentage, maybe. Well, know, I'm, so. I'm, I'm all for that because I'm actually also teching our show. Right, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. If, uh, if my company's watching then yeah. you know, I, I, I would appreciate the bungs. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, look after your venue staff, look after your flow, mm. look, look after the people that you can look after. Absolutely, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, this, 
you can't do anything for the wider industry, probably. I don't know. We'll start the revolution maybe next week, but... It's know. all small steps, though, isn't it? Everything yeah. that helps, I think. Yeah. And just talking about these things, being, being more open about it, um, yeah. I think... Do you find that's easier do you, than when you started? Do you, uh, do, you, do I, you have a support network up here? Do you? I, I, well, my support network, particularly at the moment, is really my wife, to be honest. And, and it helps for me because she's not in the same industry as me, but she right. does understand it. I mean, she's a photographer as well, so she does all that sort of stuff. You do have the friends that you can turn to, that you know, understand. And that's the weirdest thing for me, having been and still being one half of a double act, because when we're up here together, you are each other's support network, and you know, you can have your quiet sort of, um, I don't know, commentary in your head and know he's thinking the same thing and then you go away from that room and you can talk about it here I'm sort of oh he's not here you know so I think for me my first of the three years I've done on my own was trying to work out what that felt like because I was so used to being with someone you know but I can still speak to him by text or by email or whatever and phone and know that he understands you know but I, yeah I think we're all getting better at it I, I think you know and things like this help that a lot but people are much more open about how these things affect them how reviews affect them how the sort of stamina thing affects them I think you know that wasn't really there even 10 years ago I don't think so and there's a, I think there's a better understanding now mm. people are talking more about like the pressures of, of yeah, the festival yeah. and the bubble yeah I remember actually speaking to one comic who's very very big and him saying, well, it's even more pressure for him now because there's even, even more people looking and there's even less time to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's good to be... You know, I was watching one of the interviews, I can't remember who it was with, and them saying, you know, they do a year on, a year off. Yes. Because it gives them time to write a better show. Tien and Dib? Yes, it was. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's so true because, I mean, I felt this is my fourth one in a row. To be honest, I wasn't feeling it before I got here. I thought this is just not ready at all. And you, the worry that comes with... You know, the time that's spent worrying about the worry rather than doing the show. And then eventually you get to about the week before and you get here and it starts to fall into place. And you go, well, okay, this has got an identity on its own. But it is, it can be a whole year, you know, as a yeah. comic or as is an it, actor. Is it a new show every time? Yeah, I mean, there's sort of a bit of a crossover. Sort of five or ten minutes might feature. But that, even that, why do you have to make it just a completely new show? Who's even looking? Who's noticed? You know, why mm. do you, it's only your own self sort of, I don't know, uh, disappointment, if anything, that's making you make it completely different, mm. you know. And you forget bits as well. I've, I've, yeah. I've seen the same. I've, seen, I've been up here and seen a show that I really enjoyed the previous year, and just gone and seen the same one yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, um, it's like turning on an album you like, isn't it? Sometimes, yeah. you know. And it is. It's incremental polish as well. Yeah, yeah. it's not. Yeah. It's never the same show. There's, no. It's improved. Yeah, and better. exactly. Yeah, yeah. When, when do you start thinking about Edinburgh? When do you start thinking about this is this is what I'm going to do for my show? You're already starting when you're here. Yeah. I think you know. Um, yeah. I'm not going to do this next year. No, exactly. I've <laughs> learned the hard way that this is. Yeah. So yeah, you're always thinking about it and I, I which can be frustrating really because I mean I'm like most comics I carry a notepad all the time even at the worst moments when someone says something really negative in fact my dad pointed out across the street when I went to visit him recently that I put on weight that was the first thing he said rather than hello and I, I was you know downtrodden because obviously it's something I'm self-conscious about but then part of me was going that can go in I can use that so yeah it's a good way of turning the negative into a positive I think and normalizing it I can't remember which meeting it was I think it might have been Bill Bailey that said or it may have been Mitch oh. Hedberg did a line about. Uh, Is it what would, what would Bill Bailey do? It was it was waking up in the middle of the night with an idea and having mm. a notepad next to the bed to write it down. Yeah. But if you put the notepad a little bit further away, then you're more likely to think it's not good enough for me to get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. It's good, but it's not. It's yeah, not getting yeah. out of bed and grabbing my yeah. notepad. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It just helps you sleep a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> so, are you thinking of you know what you would do for your show? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to do like a. I'd call it a one-man show. Um, Who'd be in it? Uh, I'll do it. Think about like. casting. Yeah. Uh, the baby that was in Train Spotting. Yes. He's, yeah. he's hot right you now. You could have him and the baby on the front of Nevermind in Nirvana. Yeah. Oh yeah. All but the famous yeah. babies. We were about the same age. Which I think is a song. All the famous yeah. babies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'd like to do. I think just jokes. Um, I'm not a very good storyteller. I have attention difficulties. Um, so I think just. Weird and funny jokes. Funny, stupid, strange um, is how I try and. That's your title. Sure. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Yeah. Debut hour. Um, got you on a venue? Just, Where do you like? Have Convention centre is nice. You get, oh, you, yeah. I think it's 2,000 in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Comfy seats as well. Festival theatre, three and a half thousand. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, I'll go for it. You know, if, if I like them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get it down. Just go and, go and ask them. Yeah, I'll just show up one day. 
So what's your expectation for Edinburgh this year? What's a good year? How, what do you mean coming out of it, feeling yeah. like I've had a good year? I don't know really, because the thing is, I do know privately what I think that is, as in improving yourself and trying to, you know, tackle certain difficulties you have. But you do get sucked into that Edinburgh mindset, however much you're aware of it, and however you're aware of the falsities of it, you know, you do, you just find yourself caring about the things you tell yourself the rest of the year you don't care about. So, um, I don't know, coming out the other end of it, feeling that I've done a good job, there's someone doing a warm-up behind us right now, um, and yeah, not exhausted and felt that I enjoyed it. And I've actually, I have really have had that the last couple of years. I mean, obviously you get to the point when you're exhausted and you're clearing up your digs and you hate, you know, the, the streets and the fire, not the flyers, but just the busyness. But if you can go away from it, not completely destroyed and go, no, I enjoyed that, that was an experience, that's the goal. Very good save on the flyers thing. Do you we think, don't, yeah. don't Fly, no, no, it's not that. Do you know it's not? It's, it's not <laughs> the general public. It's the bustle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the that many people. Bustle. Yeah, just walking across. Yeah, everyone. stopping and taking pictures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nothing wrong into, with that. No, which they do with me regularly. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that that guy's face. We need to document that. It's terrible. Well, gents, thanks so much for coming in and, uh, for having, and having a Thank chat. You. Uh, it's been great to see you. I hope it goes really well for you both. Thanks Thank you for the, much, the fake fruit rider that you've provided. All that yes, it was, it was on your list. And the trellis. I did ask for a trellis, so <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Always a trellis. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're going to be back again tomorrow with some, with some more guests. I hope you've had a lovely time. I hope you're having a lovely time at the festival and continue to do so. Stay hydrated. We'll see you again. Yes, I did notice None those. Thanks for that. <laughs> Never leave your notes. Never leave your notes alone. It's probably gotcha. worth. This is the cutaway, isn't it? Tomorrow. This is the. So when I get back to the desk and look down at my notes, I've got. <laughs> why am I a? Not going to read that word. <laughs> not going to read that. And not going to read that either. <laughs> <laughs>